Good afternoon. So when I was first invited here today to talk about failure, I was thinking about one of the many failings from my life should I really focus on here today. So many to choose from. Now, instead of uh, making the talk all about myself, I thought I'd start with this. This is the mission of Unlimited. We're about supporting people to transform the world. Might seem rather ambitious, but we've been around for about 10 years and supported around 20,000 people. And the thing I find most fascinating about all of the individuals and the people and social entrepreneurs that I've met is that they're more often than not entirely driven by a social cause and a social purpose, something which is really personal to them, something they may have experienced in their lives which has completely changed the direction and perspective of their lives for the better. Now, more often than not, it might be a failing in society that has led them to feel this way. More often than not, sometimes they just look at an opportunity, or look at a challenge, rather, and see an opportunity. So when I first started, I used to um, find fun and support young people to start community projects. It's a bit of an exercise I used to do with everyone, which I was hoping to do with you all here today, if that's OK. No objections, that's good. Um, so I wanted to get you all to think about and ask you all a question. And that question is, what's failing in your communities? I want you all to take a moment to think about what are the social issues, the challenges, and the causes that local people face in your local area, maybe in the city or the town or the village where you're from. I want you all just to take a moment and think. I hope you can all visualize something. Obviously, depending where you live, your, long, your list might be a bit longer than others. But I want you to also think about what are the root causes of these challenges? I mean, why do they exist? What's failed, essentially, in your communities for this social challenge to have arisen? What is addressing and taking forward? Now, I hope you've all thought of something. I'm going to ask you to pick one thing that one thing that you maybe you feel most passionate about, or maybe most angry about, or maybe you care the most about, just choose one thing out of that list just to focus on for a moment while I ask you, what are you going to do about it? If money and resources were no object at all, and you could do anything that you want to do, what would you do? A little hand show of hands, how many people are currently actively involved in supporting a local cause that they care about? Okay, some, that's great. It feels that more and more, increasingly, people are taking action to try and address the failings in society. A recent RBS tracker showed that over 62% of all budding young entrepreneurs aged 18 to 30 are influenced by a social cause in starting their own venture or business. And apparently, the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor says there's about a quarter of a million people in the UK trying to start a social venture right now. So why not start up? Why not do it? Now, another show of hands. How many people in the room currently work for yourself? Excellent. That shows about right. Says the, uh, the Gem Monitor says, in the UK, there's a, just shy of 5% of people of the population age 18 to 30 are currently working for themselves. Actually, 4.6. It'd be about 46 of you out of 1,000 of people here today, which might seem like quite a lot. But by international comparison, over in Germany, the rate's as high as 8%. In America, the rate's as high as 9.6, almost double the amount of people working for themselves or engaged in entrepreneurship. So why are there more people in America starting up versus here in the UK? Some people believe the secret to Silicon Valley's success is not only the scale of their ambition, but their attitude towards risk and failure. Now, they developed a mantra about failing fast and learning as much from your mistakes as possible as soon as you can. So why aren't more people starting up in the UK? What could it be? Are we more risk-averse here as Brits? What, are the, what else would stop us from starting up? Well, failure, the fear of failure, is considered to be one of the biggest contributing factors preventing people from doing their own thing and working for themselves. Now, which is quite unsurprisingly, really, when the world view tells us that three out of four all new businesses fail. Quite a harsh statistic. In fact, Harvard Business School recently published a report that said that three out of four venture-backed businesses completely fail. 
which might not be a surprise to some of you, as some of us know many startups go nowhere. But one of the things I found most interesting about these findings is that actually not having the support of an investor or a funder and essentially having the money to keep going whilst you're developing your model was seen as one of the most important factors to the business's failure rate. Some of the other factors are access to mentors and people that you need to make it happen. But essentially, this is taking the very world view and basing the, the success or the perception of success on how profitable that social, um, sorry, that startup might be, how much money it makes. So I wanted to compare this against some of the social ventures we support Unlimited. We support about 1,000 people a year to start up and work for themselves. Initially, quite surprisingly, I saw that actually three out of four of our social ventures survive, well, at least past the first year, which might not be a complete surprise, actually, as we do provide money and mentors and the things that Harvard Business School tells you are important to be successful. However, I think it's something way beyond that. I think it's how we view success. As we're talking about social ventures here, we're talking about businesses that are set with a primary social or environmental purpose. So actually, not only are we rating them about how much money they make, but actually, more importantly, is what impact they might have on the people or on the planet around them. And how actually we view these social ventures in a completely different light. Yes, you have to be sustainable. Yes, you have to make enough money to get by. But actually, the impact that your venture creates is a thing that we find to be the biggest success. And perhaps we take a slightly different view on the global view of what is success for a social venture. Now, when I look a bit deeper at the 25% that fail, yes, there was some common correlation with the Harvard Business stuff around, yes, the people who don't have access to money and aren't able to sustain their living fail pretty fast. It's a fact. However, on a positive note, I saw that around a third of all the social ventures that didn't survive the first year had wound up the venture because it actually achieved their social outcome. What it is that it was set up to address, they felt it was, it was achieved. So therefore, the failure not succeeding and not surviving isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, I view that as a very positive outcome for an apparent failed venture. Additionally, about a quarter of the social ventures that didn't survive had a change in life circumstance. Something moved them on. Whether it was a personal or professional, they might have taken a new career path and taking the lessons learned from their failures to take them forward in their lives, which again I'd see as a rather positive outcome for an apparent failed venture. And amazingly, when I asked all of the people that had failed their social ventures in their first year, incredibly, over 80% of them felt they had a really positive experience, they really learned something along the way, and around 60% of them felt they wanted to go out and do it again, taking their learnings from their failures, and the expertise and the skills that they had from having a go at something, and take it forward in their lives. Have a go at trying again next time. Hopefully a little better next time. So personally, I think we should never shy away from our failures. Essentially, we should try and take the lessons learned from our failures forward in our lives. As after all, failure is really the best teacher in the school of hard knocks. I think we should wear our failures like a badge of honor, not shy away from them, but help them to take us forward in whatever our future may bring. I leave you with a little bit of a call to action, which is what is failing in your communities? And what are you going to do about it? I hope we can all fail forward together. Thank you very much. <laughs>